Are you ready to say goodbye to the constant ups and downs of the artist income roller coaster? Whether you're a full-time artist who wants to increase and stabilize your income, a part-time musician who wants to go full-time, or a hobbyist who needs to fund your passion projects, this podcast will equip you with the tools, resources, and inspiration to make it happen. My name is Bree Noble. I'm a musician, best-selling author, and educator whose mission is to help musicians like you to increase the income you're already making and tap into new income streams so you can create a more diverse, stable, reliable income from music and finally ditch the starving artist mentality. Now let's dive into The Profitable Musician Show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. My name is Bree Noble. I am so happy to be here today with Aaron Ross from My Music Staff. I love bringing you guys tools, uh, software, and, you know, things that can help you run your business better. And I know we have a lot of music teachers who listen or watch the podcast, Um, whether you're just doing a few students private students, group students, you have, you know, a whole school that you run. This is going to be something that's going to be interesting to you. And actually one of my Academy members is the one who told me about my music staff because she uses it to manage her own private students. So I reached out to them and I'm excited to be talking with Aaron today about what they have that can help you guys. But before we get into that, uh, Aaron, I'd love to hear a little bit about you, how long you've been with the company, and then kind of the origins of the company up to where you guys are at now. Absolutely. And again, just a big thank you to uh, having me here, having me on the podcast today. I'm really excited to share a bit more about my music staff and what it can do for private music teachers and music studio owners. Um, so I'm the communication specialist at my music staff. I've been working with them for almost three years. Uh, But my music staff itself launched in 2013. So we're going on kind of eight, eight and a half years of being in business. Uh, We like to say it started as a love story between our founder, who was a software developer, and his wife, who's a music teacher. She was looking for something that could help her manage her students and her finances and her schedule. Um, And she was looking out there and couldn't really find anything that fit what she wanted. So she asked our founder if he could build something for her. Um, which he did, and it's grown to be the My Music staff that we have today. Um, My role as the communication specialist, uh, anything in writing, anything talking, I'm there, uh, whether it is connecting with our members online in our private Facebook community, whether it's going out to trade shows and talking to music teachers, getting a sense of what features they're hoping to see, what they love about our product, what else we could do to help support them, and then being able to take that back and help connect the dots and make our product even better. That is where my role fits in. Um, But for anyone who's not familiar with what my music staff is, it's a studio management software. Uh, The core four features are we manage your students, your schedule, your attendance, and all of your invoicing and billing. Uh, But there's a lot more beyond that. Uh, We've got uh, a student portal where your students and their parents can access information as well. There's an online resources section. There's even a website builder that's included in the subscription. Uh, So there's really, really a lot that it can do for music teachers. So it sounds like it's really like a, a whole solution for teachers all boxed into one. I mean, the fact that you have a website builder as well is pretty impressive. I'm assuming it's it's a pretty, you know, simple kind of website just to attract people to start working it with is. you as a teacher. Yeah, it's a fairly basic builder. Um, we know that a, a lot of music teachers and studio owners, they're coming from a music background, maybe not so much a business background. So they may not be, you know, you're probably not a website developer as well. So it's a very simple builder but it allows you to have that place where you can market your studio, you can have a sign-up form on there for new students, you can have a place for students to log into the student portal. And then if you are a bit more advanced than that and you already have a website built somewhere else, whether it's Squarespace or WordPress, we have widgets that you can add onto it as well. We really pride ourselves on the flexibility that the platform has to offer. So whether you are just starting out, you're a private music teacher with a few students hoping to grow, 
you can use a few of the features for now. And as you grow, you can use a few of the features down the line. Or if you're jumping in and you're a multi-teacher music studio, you've got you know, 20 plus teachers with you, you've got a couple hundred students, there's still something that works for you. Mm, that's amazing that it's so versatile. So I know you guys are based in Canada, but you have people using this all over the world, right? We do. Yes. We are located just a little bit outside of Toronto, about 40 minutes away, but we have members everywhere. Um, we have a lot in North America. Uh, we have a number of Australian members in New Zealand. We have a lot of members in South Africa and the UK. They're really spread out all over the world, which is another reason why we like to keep the product so flexible. We know that teaching music and studio policies in general vary from region to region. So rather than setting up a program that really only works for North American teachers and the way they do things. We've got it built out so settings can be adapted to fit a studio's existing policies and the way they already do things instead of trying to make them fit into this one specific way of doing things. That's really cool. What about languages? Is it basically English based or are there other language options? Right now it is in English. Um, the browser, so it's a web-based application, which means any device that has the internet, you can log into it. So um, a lot of people, if English is not the first language, they can use the Chrome translation that's mm. built into the browser to translate. It is something that we are hoping to implement in the future. There are some updates we're working on now that help. Um, so down the line for a future update, we'll, we'll be able to offer a full translation of the product. Mm. Uh, so it is coming, but so far English for now. And what about on the financial side? Is it all in US dollar and Canadian dollars or can you do like British pounds? Yep. So both for our own pricing for the membership and for what you're able to invoice and bill in for students, uh, it is based on region. Um, like I said, we have a number of members all over the place. We in uh, integrate with PayPal and Stripe to collect online payments. So credit card payments can be done online. If you are based in the US, um, the Stripe integration also works with ACH bank transfer payments, hmm. but the payment itself is handled through PayPal or Stripe, which are both global and both accept payments and currencies all over the world. Um, so it's great if you are a teacher in Europe, you can charge in euros rather than again, being kind of fit into this box of, of just a North American product. Yeah, that's great. I'm, I mean, pretty much PayPal and Stripe are universally. Yeah, pretty, you know, pretty integrated. much everywhere these days. Right. That's awesome. Okay. So let's talk about like, why, what were the, the pain points of the founders? Like, why did she, what was she, why was she looking for a software to help her with her teaching and what did you guys kind of roll out in what, in what order in, in order to help people? So finances are a really big one for mm. a lot of teachers, especially there's so many different ways of collecting payments, whether it's cash or check handed in person at a lesson or, um, you know, getting something sent online. Um, and payments are always changing as well. Different billing models, uh, where you have teachers who charge per lesson, who charge a flat monthly rate, and it can get really, really complex. So being able to manage that in a really simple way uh, was one of the key kind of driving factors to like, where do we need to focus the features and how do we support music teachers? And the billing and invoicing is some of our most used features. It's, it's a, a fan favorite feature, I would say, is our auto pay. Um, the way my music staff works is called calendar-based billing. So we've made it really easy to handle the billing and invoicing things by putting the focus more on the scheduling side of it. So with calendar-based billing, you set up your pricing for your students. And when you schedule them on the calendar, the system now knows, okay, you're going to charge them $50 per lesson. You've got four lessons on the calendar. So it's automatically calculating that amount behind the scenes for you. Mm. And when you look at the family account, you've got a running list of the charges based on what you put in the calendar. And like I said, there's you can do per lesson rates, an hourly rate. You can do a, a flat monthly rate where if you're just charging, for example, $100 for the month, regardless of if they have one lesson or five lessons. Um, and we find with a lot of music teachers that we were talking to, the billing and invoicing at the end of the month or the beginning of the month was taking up so, so much time that if we could streamline that portion of it, it gives so much more time to actually focus on teaching. Oh, I so agree with that. I think that 
I mean, first of all, it's not necessarily the thing that they love to do or that's in their wheelhouse, you know? And so just having most of this automated saves so much time and they can focus on what they really love doing, which is working with the students. Absolutely. So let's just say somebody, let's say you charge it like, like a packages, like say like a three month package. Right. And at that point you're going to book out. Okay. I, I have a lesson every Thursday for three months. Do they charge, does it charge every week or does it charge like the whole package at once? It's really up to you. So again, going back to the flexibility, there's so many different settings built into the invoicing and billing features as well. Um, We have, uh, especially in the UK and Australia, they tend to charge by the term a lot more, whereas Mm -hmm. in North America, a trend we've noticed is often the monthly billing. And of course it varies varies, um, studio to studio. Um, But we've got it in place so you can choose whether it's weekly, you can choose whether it's monthly, you can choose whether it's uh, prepaid lessons or postpaid and you're billing at the end of the month after they've been in place. Um, If you have, say, a 10-week term or a 10-week package, you could put all of the lessons on the calendar and then run an invoice for, you know, that 10 week date range. Mm -hmm. Uh, It really, really is flexible. You can also have all of these different settings different for each family. So if you have one family that comes and they're charged a hundred dollars a month, every month, you can set that up and then separately a different family who's just on, you know, a, a 10 week lesson package, for example, would have their own billing set up. So it allows you to be able to offer different things at different price points to students. That's pretty incredible. That's, that's very, very flexible. That's amazing. So what about as far as the scheduling, are you able to kind of set different lengths of lessons depending on the student um, and let them book into that? And can you like block out times where you like don't want people to book in? I'm assuming they are able to book in their own times. Yes. So there is an option to allow students to book in their own times. You don't have to enable that. um, But if you do, they would be able to log into the student portal and register for any open slots or cancel within the cancellation deadline. Um, When it comes to scheduling, there's a lot of different options. We do have a default lesson option, which just is kind of your quick shortcut to the main type of lesson and the main lesson length and price for that student. But you can add any different events on top of that. You can do group lessons. um, And again, you can set it. So say you want a maximum of 10, it will allow up to 10 students to register themselves, or you can add them in yourself. Um, You can set up recurring lessons, whether it's weekly, bi-weekly, monthly. Um, A lot of our members use it to organize their recitals as well, especially Mm -hmm. if they offer maybe a couple of different recital times on one day and say, you know, pick which time slot you want to sign up for through the student portal. Um, You can also create your own custom categories and locations, which is really, really helpful. So by default, it's got just, you know, a regular lesson in there. But we have members who add categories based on instrument. If they're a larger studio that teaches um, a number of different instruments, we have members who put categories based on sometimes they offer a one off workshop or uh, monthly makeup lessons, for example, and they want to put that in a separate category and for location. Um, we have options for you know, the student's home where it would automatically pull in their address and set up your studio location. And we do integrate with Zoom, FaceTime and Skype. So you can set it up as an online location. And then when that lesson comes around, it will have the Zoom meeting link right there or the, um, the Skype or FaceTime user ID. That's pretty awesome. Now, did you, did you have that in place before the pandemic happened? We did not. It was on our radar. It was on our (laughs) list of ideas as something we were really hoping to do at some point because we know that um, online lessons were just becoming more prevalent in the industry anyways. And then when the pandemic hit and everyone kind of had to quickly adapt to online within a couple of weeks, we're like, okay, let's get this going. So um, the Zoom integration works really well. It will pull the teacher's Zoom meeting ID that you just put on the team. That link can be included in the automatic lesson reminder to the students so they can get the link right there. They would also see it in the student portal. And then from the teacher side, it would be on the, the homepage, a little daily agenda, or from the calendar itself. And then with Skype and FaceTime, if you say the students, um, the FaceTime ID or the Skype user in their profile, 
there'll be a little button to call them directly at that time as well, which was so, so helpful for so many people trying to not only figure out how to adapt their lesson plans to be online, having to now learn new technology if they weren't familiar with Zoom, and then figure out how to, on top of that, manage that at the schedule. Mm -hmm. Um, We were able to implement that pretty quickly. I, I know a lot of our members really, really appreciated being able to have that seamless integration. I'm sure. Now, do they have to have their own own Zoom account or is this your Zoom account they're using? It's based on uh, the teacher Zoom account. Okay. And so many of them still use a, a free account. Um, if you have a paid account, it works just the same. We've done it based on the, uh, the personal meeting IDs. So you can just use the same link every time. But if someone did set up recurring events, so each student has a different Zoom link based on what they've set up in Zoom, there's also a place where they could include that in the notes when they're scheduling the lesson. So it would be there as well. Got it. And I'm assuming if they want to record the lesson, they need to have the Zoom that, that records. Yeah. So everything, once they click that link, would open up Zoom in a new tab. Um, and then everything from the, the video lesson would be handled within Zoom while my music staff is open in another tab. Okay, got it. Now, do you guys have the ability inside of the portal for teachers to put videos in there? Like say they want to pre-record, you know, an example, them doing something for an example, or they wanted to take a recording from that they did through Zoom and make it available to the student. Are they able to do that inside the portal? We do have that actually. We have a feature called online resources. Um, Another one, now this one we did have before the pandemic, but we saw a big jump in the usage of it during the pandemic where you can upload any files that you wanted to share with students. And so that's whether it's an audio file, whether it's a video, whether it's um, a PDF of a worksheet or a Word document, um, that can go directly in there. You can assign it to specific students. So if there's something that you only want your piano students to see in your, let's say you have other instruments that you teach as well, you can specifically assign it to them so that you're not getting students stumbling across files that aren't meant for them when they're looking in the student portal. You can also connect them to the lesson notes. So this is another feature that our members love to use. Um, When you're taking attendance, we've got a whole section built in where you can write lesson notes. Um, And so instead of pen and paper where you're scribbling down notes during a lesson, you can type everything directly in there. Um, You can copy the notes from the previous lesson. So you're always kind of building on top of that. And you can email those notes off to the student and parent at the end of the lesson, or they can access that through the portal itself. Mm. You can also link to these online resources from there. So it's been really great, again, especially during the pandemic, where during the lesson, you've got Zoom open in one tab, you've got your attendance and notes section on my music staff in another tab. You can then write the notes as the lesson's going and then be able to say, you know, see the linked file for more information. Wow. That's really, that's really great. So does each student have their own kind of account inside there where they can find their own resources or is it only if they assign it to particular people? So the student portal is really what you make of it. Um, You can assign, you have to send the login information as the teacher to the family in order for them to set up their portal, which is also great because it means if there's only some families that you want to have access to it, you can just send it to them. If there's some families you don't want to have access to the portal, you don't have to send them the login information. Um, and if it's a, um, if it's not an adult student, then there would be a student login and a parent login. And mm-hmm. the difference is in the parent login, they would have access to everything in the portal, including the finances. So they are able to view their invoices, view the charges accruing and make a payment if you're integrated with Stripe and PayPal. Whereas in a student account, unless you've set them as an adult student, they would not have access to the finances part of it, but they could see everything else. So if you are leaving lesson notes, they would be able to go in and review those. If you are assigning them online resources, they would be able to go in and view those and download those. If you're in a multi-teacher studio, every teacher has their own space within the online resources. So if you are a student taking violin with one teacher and piano lessons with another teacher, each teacher could be uploading files into their own space that the Mm -hmm. student or parent can access through the portal. Um, Being able to register for open lesson slots and cancel existing lessons would be done through the portal. We've got a practice log in there, which is a great opportunity as well for students to track their progress throughout the week 
um, until their next lesson and make some notes about, you know, maybe this section specifically was giving me a tough time. Can we focus on this in the next lesson? You know, as much as the teacher side of my music staff is a one-stop shop for teachers to manage all of the admin that comes with running a studio, we really wanted to make the student portal a one-stop shop for parents and students to access what they need outside of that lesson time. Yeah, that's really great. Um, you've definitely thought of of a lot of, of yeah. needs, especially I love that separate parent and student portal options. Um, I'm curious, like what, what was your, well, first of all, how many teachers are using my music staff? Do you have a sense of that? Um, you know, I don't have an exact number off the top of my head uh, because we have so many multi-teacher studios as well. Mm. There's, you know, a number of studios, but then there's also the number of teachers within that. So right. we have a number of private music teachers where it's just them. We have smaller studios where there's maybe, you know, two to five or two to six teachers. And we do have some large studios using my music staff where there's, you know, 20 plus or 30 plus teachers. Um, and that can be changing constantly if they're upgrading their plan or downgrading their plan. So there is definitely a, a lot of teachers using us. Um, we do have a great community. We, we have a private Facebook community for our subscribe members. We have about 3,000 in that community wow. specifically, but we know there are there are more teachers in that beyond just the Facebook group. Right. Um, wow, that's that's a lot. Um, what was what was your experience um, with them during the pandemic? Like, were they able to to flip pretty quickly to doing online and were there any like special things beyond the Zoom stuff? Was there any other special things that you added to help out teachers during that time? We were, I mean, I'm sure I can speak on behalf of everyone else here at my music staff, but me personally being quite active in some of the Facebook groups and keeping an eye on it, I was incredibly impressed by how quickly everyone adapted. There were sort of the rumblings as COVID was starting to ramp up about what are we going to do? How will this impact up? And then it seemed like overnight, it was sort of a like, okay, let's go. Like, we're all in this together. Let's do it. I saw so many resources being shared. Um, a lot of people just putting stuff together and being like, if anyone's unfamiliar with, with Zoom, you know, download this free resource. This will help you out. If anyone is um, you know, needs help with equipment and how to get things set up. Like we're going to run a webinar. We'll, we'll get you all the stuff you need. So it was really, really impressive to see just how quickly everyone was able to sort of adapt and just go on the fly and really fall into the online lessons. I know it was a shift for, for anyone who wasn't super familiar with it for, from the student side as well. Um, but it was, it was incredible to see, honestly. Um, for us, features wise, the main ones were the online lessons. We did put together a resource that we shared with our members and, and shared kind of far and wide as we could, highlighting some of the other features that we already have in place and how they would help specifically with online teaching. Mm. So for example, like I said, the, the online resources, it was a feature we already had in place. Um, but even within members who had already been using us for, for a few years, we saw a big increase in the usage of that because suddenly they didn't have another option. Right. Um, the practice log, again, it was like, we're going to highlight this and say, you know, you may not see them next week, but this is a place that throughout the week, the students can now log their practice and leave notes for you. You may not have used it before, but now's a really good time to start using it. Um, if you don't already have the student portal in place, like here's some really great resources. We did put together some student portal kind of cheat sheets as well that could be shared with families, just really simple infographics, breaking down a lot of the really common features that are used in the student portal, like how to add a credit card, how to register for a lesson. So we're like, okay, if you're suddenly inviting a bunch of families to the student portal now because you're online and you really want them to use these features, we've put in some work here so you can just share this with them. And on top of everything else, you're learning how to do with online lessons. You don't have to now teach your families how to use the portal. Oh, that's really smart. I'm sure they really appreciated that. Mm -hmm. And I bet, you know, having the, if they weren't as much using the finance side of it, I bet they started using it a lot more because if they were used to like a kid handing them a check every time they came to a lesson oh, and now that's not happening. <laughs> Yeah. And one thing we, we saw a lot you know, in comments in our Facebook group and heard on support calls and tickets was I've been putting off integrating with the online payments for so long. Mm -hmm. I wish I had done it sooner. Like <laughs> the pandemic kind of 
force them into doing it because that was the only option. And then seeing it in action was like, wow, like this would have saved me so much time. I wish mm. I had done this a year ago. I'm, I'm happy I've done it now. Yep. Yep. Sometimes, uh, you know, what is it? Uh, necessity is the mother of invention or whatever, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's, it's good to kind of shake things up every once in a while to yeah, make get you realize, oh gosh, I, I've been more. doing this in an antiquated way for so long and wasting time. So is there anything else um, coming up for my music staff that you want to highlight that you guys are maybe looking at on the horizon of the next year or two? Yeah, actually, we have been working on uh, a huge project for the better part of the last couple of years. Uh, my music staff has been, like I mentioned earlier, we've been out for about eight and a half years. We launched in 2013. Uh, the needs of music teachers have changed a lot and different features they'd like to see. Technology has changed a lot. So we've actually been working on overhauling the entire platform. Mm -hmm. uh, our development team has been very busy, very hard at work, rebuilding every feature on newer technology. Um, so that is going to help with load times, make things load even faster. Like I said, we're a web-based application. So you know, the faster things load on the internet, the better it is, the easier it is to access your information. So things will be loading faster. We're updating the interface a bit just to modernize it a bit more. And we're also going to make sure we have an extra focus on the mobile experience. So many teachers are using my music staff on the go. Uh, even when they're teaching in person, maybe they don't have a full monitor set up, but they have their phone nearby. So they're taking attendance on their phone, they're writing lessons on their phone. So making sure that we have uh, an even better mobile experience. And that is, uh, it's been a huge project. We're really excited to get it out there. We're in kind of the initial phases of our beta testing. So that is something that uh, our members will be seeing sometime this year. Everything, of course, depends on how long different phases of the testing go, but we're really, really excited to get that out there. And then another benefit of rebuilding it on this newer technology is um, the way we're rebuilding things allows us to then make it even easier to add some of these other bigger features that we've been hoping to add. We take, um, we take the feedback from our members to heart. We get so much feedback, so many great ideas about things they'd like to see. Um, as we expand globally more and more, we hear about features or ways that music teachers are running their studio, maybe that we didn't think of because we're not used to seeing it in this area, but it's a little more prevalent in another region. So being able to implement a lot more changes and add some more features will be a lot easier. And I know we have a very long list. Um, building out a more kind of natively built lesson packages feature is definitely on the list. Um, I kind of mentioned earlier with the way our invoicing works, we do have a lot of members who offer packages and there are ways of setting up the invoicing so it invoices and bills them correctly, but being able to make that whole process even easier with just a few clicks of, of adding you know, a package specifically and charging it is definitely one thing on the horizon. Um, so that is what we've been spending a lot of time doing. And then that's more of the technical side, but more on the kind of connection side of things. We used to go to a lot of trade shows, which was so great because we could go connect in person with our members. And you know, we, we have a great support team. They're available by phone and email. We hear from a lot of members and we're able to help them. But sometimes there's members who we don't really get to hear from because they don't have a question. They don't you know, they haven't run into an issue they need assistance with. And it's great to get out to those shows and just have a conversation with them and meet new teachers who get to see my music staff in action and meet teachers who've been using us for seven years who get to just tell us, you know, what they love about it and what they'd hope to see. Um, obviously, the pandemic put a halt on that. Uh, we were able to attend a number of virtual trade shows which was great to still get out there and have that connection, but we're really, really excited and hoping to get back to some in-person shows this year. Mm, yeah. It would be nice to have yeah. shows and conferences and things like that back. <laughs> yeah. Well, is there, Oh, I know what I wanted to cover the pricing. <laughs> what are your um, different tiers of pricing and what, you know, the different things that you get with each level? Mm -hmm. So we've kept our pricing really simple. Um, we find it's, it's the best way to do it, keep it straightforward. We're not trying to hide any fees. We're not trying to you know, make it too expensive and inaccessible to everyone, uh, especially for smaller teachers just starting out. We wanted to keep the pricing nice and simple. So for a single teacher account, um, for going in for uh, North America, so or for Canadian and US dollars, it's $12.95 a month. And then if you're a multi-teacher studio, it's that $12.95 a month plus $3.95 a month for any additional teacher. 
Um, but we do also have a few different options for regional pricing. So we do offer UK pricing, um, Australia, New Zealand, and the Euro as well. So the best thing to do if you are not in Canada or the US, check out mymusicstaff.com and go to our pricing page and that will show you in your currency. That's a pretty, pretty incredibly low price. In my pretty opinion. affordable. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what we feel. And every feature is included in that. There's nothing that is something you have to pay extra for. The only other fees you would have to think about are if you do integrate with Stripe and PayPal, there are processing fees associated with that. That's not something that we collect or anything that we take a cut of. That's just kind of the that's gonna happen transaction no fees. Yeah, exactly. Um, you don't have to use Stripe or PayPal integration. You can just record payments manually if you do accept them another way. However, any of our members who are set up with online payments will tell you it's worth it. Um, those transaction fees may be something that you're not used to paying, but the time that you save not having to then chase down payments or go to oh, the yeah. bank to deposit a check makes it so, I mean, so, it's so really, worth it. It usually comes out to about 3% and it is so exactly. worth it. Wow. That is incredible what you guys offer for teachers and the price that you offer it at. I'm very impressed. Now, is there anything else that we haven't covered yet today? This has been really a great very informative um, kind of review of what you guys offer for teachers. Yeah, I mean, I guess the only other thing I would say is just we do have a support team. They are fabulous. Um, you know, we all work in-house, so I know them all very well. We do have phone support and email support available. So if anyone is listening to this and thinking, I'm not sure, I might want to check it out, or maybe you're already a member and you heard about a feature that you haven't used yet and want a bit more information, please call, please email. Um, again, if you visit mymusicstaff.com and go to our contact page, um, you will be able to see the contact information. We've got a UK phone number and an international phone number, as well as a toll-free number. If you're just getting started out, we offer a free one-to-one -one onboarding session as well. You'll get the link to that if you sign up for a trial. Um, and that just gives you an opportunity to sit down with one of our team members and really go through it in a bit more detail. You can share about your specific policies, your specific setup, um, the types of lessons you offer and get some great advice about how to really, really set it up. So whether you've been a member for years or you're thinking of signing up, please know our support team is here. Um, you know, the, it's free support. It's included in the membership cost. Uh, or even if you have not signed up yet, everyone is available to help. Awesome. So mymusicstaff.com, correct? Yes, my music staff. And how else can they connect with you on, do you guys have social accounts? We do. We have a Facebook page. We're on Twitter. We have an Instagram at my music staff app where we share some great updates. Oh, in fact, I sent you a DM too. over there. I remember that's that. exactly <laughs> that's how we connected. Right. Um, and then if you want to send an email to our support team, it's support at my music staff.com. If you are a subscribed member already, we do have that private Facebook community as well which is great because it's, it's become such an amazing community as I've seen it grow over the years. It's been something I really had a hand in, in helping to grow. We're in there. Um, the marketing team kind of helps to manage that and respond where we can, but it's a great place to connect with other My Music staff members. And you'll see someone post a question wondering how to do something and you'll get a bunch of responses from people who have a very similar setup and can give great business advice. You'll get people in a similar area being like, oh, hey, like we're nearby. Have you considered this? Um, it's just, it's a great place to see that community of music teachers being built even more. And they're able to give some great advice about policies, about running the studio, as well as how they like to set things up in my music staff. Yeah, I am a huge um, promoter of community and I love the idea of people who are doing similar thing connecting like that. And you, you know, you can learn so much from other people. There's no reason to like have to figure it all out yourself. There's people that have been using this for eight years, or there's people that have been teaching for 20 years. You know, you can learn so much from those people. So you don't have to, you know, make all your own mistakes. Yeah. And we found the community just in general, even like outside of our subscribers and our members, it's such a, a tight knit community. I think that's one of the reasons why the adaptation to teaching online was a big success for so many studios. There were so many people in the industry to lean on. So many people just kind of rose up and were like, I'm here to help. Like, let's figure this out together. Let's run a webinar. Here's some free resources. Like we are all in this together. 
And that sense of community and that sense of passion across everyone is just, it's inspiring. It's great. It's why we do what we do. We're here to help you, so, you know, get through the, the admin work and the tedious stuff so that you're able to then focus on that. You can share your love of music with your students. You can connect with other teachers. You can all grow as a community because you're not spending hours every month calculating how much someone owes you. And it's just great for us to be kind of a small part of that community. Love it. Absolutely love it. Thank you so much, Erin. This has been really informative. I appreciate you giving your time and I appreciate the passion with which your company serves teachers and really tries to give them the features that they need. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I, I don't have the link handy. We did create a 60 day free trial for listeners of your podcast. Normally we do offer a 30 day free trial, um, but we did want to just put something out there. So if you're, you're hearing this and you're interested in signing up, we'd love to give you a 60 day free trial. So you just have a bit more time to explore all of the features. Brie, I will send you that link over when we get off here so that that can be shared with everyone. That is awesome. We will put it in the show notes or you can reach out to me or you can reach out to my music staff and say that you heard this on either the Profitable Musician Show or the Female Entrepreneur Musician or Brie Noble. Just use that <laughs> info if you need, if you don't have the link and I'm sure they will get you hooked up. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Erin. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Profitable Musician Show. I would love to know your takeaways and aha moments from this episode. Leave me a comment over at ProfitableMusician.com so I can bring you more of the information, interviews, and resources that you love. Thanks to Rondi Fay, one of my Academy members, for providing the music for our podcast. You can check her out at RondiFay.com. That's R-A-N-D-I-F-A-Y.com. Just remember, knowledge is power, but without implementation, it is useless. And inspiration without action is merely entertainment. But I know you're not just a dreamer, you are a doer. And I promise I'll be here every week to support you and remind you that you can be a profitable musician.